Right, afternoon, Mark. Hello, mate. It's been a wee while. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs> <And you. yeah. laughs> right, so uh, a, a nice little update um, to the process, step 12 of the process. Um, yeah, and uh, some yeah, excellent thing. information as usual, um, which we're going to go through now. Um, so should we just crack on with uh, step 12 first? Yeah. So what we'll do is just uh, work through the, you know, what's on the web on the update. Yeah. Uh, to show people that it's all out there. So just everybody that's doing this process, if if you now look at step 12, or you yeah. haven't approached step 12, then this, this has now been changed from two emails, one from the council yeah. uh, and one to the magistrate's court, combined and uh, some of the text has changed because of what we're going to show you. Yeah. All right, so uh, people are clear. Okay, uh, and here's even the box for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so like Brian's just said, it goes to the council, okay, as well as to the magistrate's court who allegedly granted the liability of it. Your usual witnesses, okay, now we've got default witness addresses which people have been using, but... It can be anybody who you know, who you trust. Uh, and now that we've got the regional structure in for the uh, Peacekeeper Telegram groups, uh, you guys can set up your own uh, uh, witnesses there. Again, decentralized so that uh, records are kept as widely as possible. Yeah. Then copy and paste into the subject line alleged liability order and copy and paste into the body Dear Clerk of the Court, it's been alleged a liability order was granted against, uh, granted by the court against me. Now enter your details, your full name, so they can do the search for that memorandum of entry, as well as the dates that it was allegedly made. I've not received a liability order to date, which is legal obligation of the court to produce at section 34.6 of the Council Tax Admin and Enforcement Regulations 92. So just remember, 34.6 says the court shall make a liability order if it's satisfied, blah, blah, blah. Most important. Shall make means it shall make it. It has no choice. The court right. make the liability order. It doesn't say grant itself shall make. Yeah. So it needs to produce them. Yeah. Then in the uh, magistrate's court rules 1156, okay, this pertains to the service of orders. Okay. At six, uh, it, it specifically excludes liability orders. So what they're saying basically, ach, liability orders were treated differently to any other court order. Yeah. However, what that is, it does not remove the legal obligation to serve a liability order. It merely says you don't have to serve in the following manner. Big difference. Mm. Okay. So default service is still required, and that they would default to Rule 67. You still yeah. need to be served the liability order. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the And the councils don't, very few councils send liability orders. They send you a notice of liability order. And therefore, this is what enforces you should get a liability order. Yeah. Okay. Now, under the Magistrates Court Rule 16.1, Okay, I require a court record of adjudication from the court register for legal purposes, which is a legal obligation under Rule 661A. And at Rule 662, it details the order must show my name, the respondent. Huh? Now, what they, they don't uh, often do this, uh, they'll sometimes uh, have a a memorandum of entry for the bulk listing of the council. However, that does not show your name. Therefore, that is not an adjudication against you. No. And um, so we've got an updated FOI, which somebody kindly did and sent to us, which confirmed that the only undisputable evidence of this alleged liability is 
uh, the order being granted is by a certified copy of the memorandum of entry from the court's register. And that there is uh, what we've been saying for a while to people to get it. This yeah. is it. And you'll see from the FOI, it even says from the Ministry of Justice, this is the only definitive document. Yeah. Uh, we'll look at why you've got good reason to insist on it uh, by looking at the papers that the council sent you. Yeah. Those that have tried know that the court will just send this to the council and the council will send their usual uh, printouts. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, no, no fee would be due. For mem a certified memorandum of entry, the cost would be £20. But because uh, if the council has received this liability order and it was indeed granted, okay, the court has already received payment from them uh, in the application for costs of the same. Yeah. Because the court has the obligation to create the liability order. Yeah. You know, uh, that's included in the cost of the application to the liability order. Mm, yeah. So with that, basically, people say they pay for the courts or hire courts and private corporations and this sort of nonsense. Yeah. Uh, every time you make an application to the court, you actually pay. Yeah. So whether I pay or you pay or I pay case or the council brings a case, somebody pays yeah. uh, for the court service. Yeah. Okay. And um, so accordingly, as the man memorandum of entry is the only definitive record to support the claim, mm -hmm. I request the council or the court to provide me a certified copy of the alleged adjudication of the court. Mm -hmm. If there is no entry in the court register for the same, I require confirmation of that fact from the court. Yeah. So we're being very, very clear. Absolutely. Uh, let's just first look at what is a memorandum of entry. So this is an example of what we want from the court. Mm -hmm. It says memorandum of entry entered in the register of this one's Buckinghamshire Magistrates Courts. Yeah. So that fulfills, here's the uh, rules. So 6-6-2. Uh, D is the date of the offence here. Uh, 66 1A is the, the confirmation here, the title and, uh, of the register. Uh, 66 2B, the name and date of birth of the defendant or respondent. Okay, so here is this person's name. Yeah. Therefore, this memorandum of entry is to this person. Yeah, connected to that person. It's yeah. connected. Yeah. Um, the name of the person laying the information is here. This case is Milton Keynes Council. Yeah. And see the memorandum of entry as a case number. Yeah. We'll be looking at that shortly. Mm. Okay. Then at 66.2c, the nature of the offence or the matter of the complaint. The complaint is that council tax has not been paid. And, and then 62F, and the uh, minute of the adjudication. So the court granted a, a liability order, or the court made a liability order for 1,842.46. And in this case, it specifically says, including the appropriate enforcement fee. So this includes enforcement fees for it. So yeah. this is the total that the court has granted. And at 16, uh, at one, uh, subsection one, a record or summary conviction or order made on complaint required for an appeal or other legal purpose. Now, what we're asking this for is to uh, hold the bailiffs off or hold enforcement off because we need to double check first that a memorandum of entry exists. Okay. Which is so, a reasonable request, if I might add. And we'll go on to the verify with yeah. the uh you know the, the bailiffs, enforcement yeah. agents, whatever you want to call them. Absolutely. So um 
this here then is the FOR from the Ministry of the Justice. Uh, obviously, we'll just zoom in because we're going to be zooming around this document a bit. So, which way plus is one? Okay. So basically, um, how is it possible to determine whether a document has been issued by a court? That's the question. That's the right question. question. Okay. So here what they say is a court order is made by the presiding justice or judge pronouncing it. It does not need to be reduced to writing to be lawful. So a document called the court order is simply a written manifestation of that oral act. It need only be reduced to writing where that is necessary to put into effect. They want to enforce it, therefore it must be in writing. Mm. All where legislation requires that document to be served on the defendant. Remember, the court shall make an order. It does not need to be served in the method specified in section 115 of the rules. However, it does not say it does not a, a liability or that does not need to be served. Uh -huh. Therefore, it still must be served, uh -huh. but just not in that manner. Yeah. Okay. Um, but even then, the written document is not the definitive record of the order. Uh -huh. It is a notification. Hence, they send you a notice of liability so. order. Yes, 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 yes. It goes on to say the definitive record is the court register which is now held purely digitally, and the only document which is a definitive record of the content of the register is a copy of the register certified by a court officer. Right. Okay. So it's very, very clear. Yeah. This is the definitive document. Yeah. Okay. Now, what it goes on to say is, if genuine doubt remains i.e. if we have a doubt, and we'll be going through showing you many reasonable doubts about the paperwork, <laughs> and you should contact the court and ask for confirmation. The gold standard would be a certified extract, a copy of the court register signed by the court officer. This is the same for all civil and criminal proceedings and magistrates. So the Ministry of Justice is absolutely clear up, yeah. The courts must uphold their uh, obligation. And we we need to make that clear also that that is clear. <laughs> Can't be made any more. Yeah, I mean, you know, a you've, wonderful job for us. With that. You've got it. It's the gold standard. You've got to provide it. They have to provide it. There's no getting away from that at all. And and, and like we've said, um, it needs to uh, um. It, uh, it needs to have your name on it. If it doesn't have your name on it, it's no good at all. No. Okay, so we said reason or reasonable doubt. So what I want to do is show you, this is uh, one of the councils is trying to take out a charging order against a property. Um, and this is their evidence that they are uh, using uh, in the county court asking for an injunction. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is it, it, the people that have tried to get liability orders. Many of them get a piece of paper like this yeah. from the council. Yeah. Okay. So remember, the first thing is we're not interested in what the council does. Absolutely. Because not. the regulation, uh, the court rules are very clear. Mm -hmm. the Ministry of Justice has confirmed mm -hmm. the court must maintain a record. Yeah. So what many of them do is the council creates this document, which allegedly is signed on the day, or possibly, who knows, we don't know. Uh, but this is off the uh, council's own uh, program, software program. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it claims to be a liability order in respect of council tax. Okay. Not liability orders, it's a singular as well. Yeah. Okay, nowhere on this is there a case number. So uh, that there means this here 
uh, has not been uh, is not a matter adjudicated by any court because right. every matter which is adjudicated by a court has a case number. Yeah, it must have a case number. Yeah, otherwise it's not a matter before the court. Right. But even within here, okay, it says gives the time, the date of the hearing, uh, which court it was. It's which magistrates court regulation blah blah blah. Um, so in here it says we've basically granted the liability orders, but talks about a table. Okay, mm. it is a judge that the defendants, i.e., multiple people, are liable to pay the aggregate amounts specified in respect of them in the table. Mm. Now, this is a council document. Yeah. If this is a li liability order or a record of the court on a single case, then putting multiple ones, they must have that table in their documentation to show what's each individual adjudication. Yeah. They issue summonses individually. Mm. Therefore, they need an adjudication against that summons individually. Yeah. But there's no amount referred to here or anything. And it's merely a program number, page number, whatever. Now, just note the signature. We'll come back to this. So the attached schedule or table that these guys are relying on, okay, is this. This has a case number on it, 108616, allegedly. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, this is the person's name and address. Uh, and this here's the amount, the costs, and the total. Yeah. Okay. Go back to the memorandum of entry. This here is what the court record should show. Yeah. However, the council produce this document, they redact all the other stuff, even though this is meant to be public record. Yeah. Every adjudication is a public record. Yeah. And, and there's no way to relate this document to the previous one. No. It hasn't got a case number. Uh, that one's got no case number. But also what they've done is produced another version of their claimed liability. Mm, yeah. Now, uh, so that's this one here, again produced by the council. So this talks now here of a summons number, <laughs> which is the same as this one, case number. Yeah. Now, here is one fraud. The summons actually showed costs of £50. Pounds. Mm. So somebody's added £25 pounds on top. Without explanation. You mean someone at the council has added 20 000. Somebody at the council has added, if this has got something to do with the court, maybe it was authorised by the court. However, the, the summons was for £50 cost, and they've just helped themselves to £75 without explanation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the reference number here, okay, this year, is actually referred to here now as an account number. <laughs> Again, there's no a no uh, case number on this document. Hi. Okay. The signature is signed by somebody else. Okay. Uh, and so that gives reasonable doubt uh, as to the genuineness of the documents that they claiming purports to be a liability order. It's a huge doubt. Okay. Well, this is beyond reasonable doubt. Really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can you just go back on that page? Just one second. Yeah. I just want to, um, on, on the last page you saw with the yeah. total amount and all the rest of it. Yeah. Just, just a minor detail, but it does say total enforcement balance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but this one's not clear whether this one actually is. Um, it, actually, sorry, no, you're right. Well, total, I'm, I'm total, thinking of enforcement. Uh, total yeah. enforcement balance will yeah. include enforcement costs. Yeah. 
You're absolutely right, mate. Total yeah. enforcement balance. That's how I read it. I don't yeah. know about anybody That's else. But... It's plain English. Yeah. Okay. doesn't say total balance plus enforcement fees, Correct. costs, does it? It's total enforcement balance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, in fact, it's even clearer than that. Um, and it is ordered that the amount may be enforced. Okay, it comes, I suppose, then in question in the manner mentioned in part four. In part four, it does talk about enforcement costs. I mean, part six. So, okay, the, it could be argumentative. But I'm... Yeah, okay, sure. You never know. Yeah. Okay. So that there is what gives us way beyond reasonable doubt. Yeah. So what I want to do now is just show you another why you really, which is uh, important, this thing about beyond reasonable doubt and why you want to uh, ensure that you get the memorandum of entry as the definitive record. Yeah. Okay, so this here's the same one which I showed you the rules on before that. Mm -hmm. um, and what it's got here is the liability orders made for 1842.46. Now, this one specifically says including the appropriate enforcement fees. Yeah. Okay, so this one you need to see the breakdown of it, but yeah. we haven't got a copy of it. Um, so, now, this is an ongoing uh, case uh, against Milton Keynes Council, uh, which, sorry, it's not a case yet, but it's uh, all the notices and that have been given. Um, and basically, the top half of this is what the council claimed had been uh, granted by the courts. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've got the dates of it, and then it's got here claimed liability ordered total £31,475.75. So with this liability order here that I've shown you, okay, this is for the 22nd of, on the 22nd of, 22nd of January 21. Okay, so this here is what the court's memorandum of entry says. One entry, total liability order made, 1842. Mm. The council claimed and sent two alleged liability orders for 1872.46 each. So somewhere, extra £30 has been added on to what yeah. the court's granted. Yeah. So somebody's perpetrating a fraud here. Yeah. Okay. Now, this gets even worse because the council claimed these liability orders for 1,213 were made on the 12th of March. They changed the date. They first said it was this date, then that date. Uh, and the court has no memorandum of entry, not only against this individual's name, but that the council even had a hearing or a listing on those dates. So that there is a clear fraud. Mm. Uh, because remember, the court's record is definitive. Yeah. Okay, then they had a claim for 22nd of January 21 for 17,000. The court has no record of that. Uh, and then there's another, this is 22nd of June. Uh, they claimed 8,000 whatever. The court actually memorandum of entry showed that, which was more. However, the properties were sold and therefore there was a reducing balance and the council isn't claiming the whole lot. Wow. But, but whether or not there's an obligation, okay, that's one argument. Mm -hmm. This here is about now, what has the court done? What is the court ordered? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, uh, if there's a memorandum of entry, that's the definitive record of an action of the court, a adjudication of the court. And until that is voided, that's enforceable. So to uh, 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 we'll talk about avoiding enforcement 
afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, but essentially, this here, this case, basically, they claim, uh, Milton Keynes Council claimed 31,475.55, whereas the court confirmed, uh, including, I'm on the assumption because at the time I made this table, we still hadn't had confirmation that this was not the case. Right. So it's 20,507, including this, which would mean it's 19,400 and something. Yeah. Or 300 and something. Mm -hmm. So basically, 31,500 minus 19,500 means the council have committed fraud to the value of what, 12,000? So That's a nice that. little learner, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, this is why we are beyond reasonable doubt yeah. that we must get the memorandum of entry. Without fail. It's not only Milton Keynes Council that we've seen this on. We've got confirmation. Uh, we just I'm just waiting for the documents to confirm it. Mm -hmm. But so far, it looks like this is happening in multiple councils around the country. Milton Keynes isn't the only one doing this. There's no surprise, though, is it? No surprise. Though. No. No. So basically, once there's a court order, okay, and you've got a memorandum of entry, that there uh, does not, uh, in the fact that there was a failure in the due process of law, because remember, we're asking for them to prove the obligation, mm -hmm. which we know they don't, and we know that they're railroad yeah. and are operating administrative courts. Yeah. Are not interested in legislation, I mean, statutory law, other than local government finance act. Yeah, it's the only one that exists. Therefore, they are not applying their minds to the evidence before them. No. Because we are using statutory instruments and we've got confirmation uh, from the uh, cabinet office as well as national archives. The documents we're relying on are also current statute law. Yeah. So we know that these are unlawful administrative courts implementing the will of government of yeah. the local government finance act. Yeah. So, but they've got the monopoly on the use of violence, as we all know. Absolutely. Uh, and they'll just come and steal and take what they want from them. Yeah. Uh, the correct procedure is what we're trying to do. We are trying to highlight that the court is not doing its job. Mm -hmm that they're agents of government and therefore are not an independent judiciary. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, uh, this whole uh, idea that you sold about the separation of powers, uh, that you have a legislature, an a, um, executive, and an independent ju judiciary is utter nonsense. Yeah. Absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence of this. <laughs> and we'll be putting out another video on, uh, we've actually got two uh, skeleton arguments from two councils now. Mm, yeah. Um, and they rely on parliamentary sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And if you just think of the absurdity, that is an open admission of no separation of powers. Yeah. And that there is no independent judiciary. And that this here merely is a parliamentary uh, tyranny, a parliamentary dictatorship. Uh, so uh, all of this is documented and uh, will be coming out. And it's time people really woke up to this. There's The illusion is totally exposed. It's not that they're private corporations and nonsense like no, that. No, 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 no. It goes way, way, way beyond that. Yeah. To support that. Uh, quite simply, the administrative courts to enforce the will to give you the illusion that there is the rule of law. Yeah, yeah, of course. But the, the, the thing that really gets me is that these 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 answers that we've got, yeah, they don't they don't. They don't get. They don't totally get it. If they do get it, they I mean, they're facilitating the fraud. Absolutely, all of the... they realize it or not, they're facilitating and upholding the fraud. Yeah, but 
But remember, the court looks at two things, or is meant to look at two things. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, the facts and the yeah. state of the mind. Yeah. Now, all of, most of these people, I do believe, honestly think legislation is law. I believe they do, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's their belief. Yeah. That there is utter nonsense. There's no evidence to support that claim. And in the one, uh, uh, this is from a barrister, so uh, Westminster Council actually has hired a barrister to fight off our challenge. Yeah. And, and the barrister uses the case law Meads versus Meads, which is arguments against what they call organized pseudo litigation, something, I don't know, yeah. freedom of the land or whatever Opka. you want to call it, Opka. Mm. They actually cite that, which is fantastic. It's Canadian, but because they're using that as an example, I'm very happy to use that well, because we acknowledge that already. Yeah. But what is really interesting is our defense is basically saying there are constraints on government. Yeah. And saying those constraints include the Bill of Rights, the uh, Act of Settlement, uh, Coronation Oath Act, uh, the various other ones. Mm. Now, in the OPCA, a uh, summary that he's quoted in parliamentary sovereignty from the Meads versus Meads judgment, it actually says uh, within the constraints of the Charter of Freedom. Mm. And then in brackets, he's got, um, this doesn't apply in England. <laughs> Which is quite correct. However, what he's presented to the court there is the government, no government can do what it wants. No. Yeah. Which is exactly our arguments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that'll be a separate uh, video and a separate thing because, again, we'll make a, a standard uh, defense sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah. you can see how far we've come. Councils were just dissing it all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the beginning. Yeah, and a few councils engaged. We rebutted their claims. Yeah, uh, we got the. I managed to get uh, an order where Liverpool councils were forced to reply. Mm. Uh, they chose to withdraw. Yeah, uh, their claim. Yeah, a whole fifteen pound forty six, and uh, basically fifteen pound forty six or one pound makes no difference or one penny. For a number of reasons. So all the naysayers, basically, if it was, you know, only fifteen pound forty six, why did they bother making the uh, council tax bill? Why did they bother to come to court the first time? Yeah, yeah. Why didn't they come the second time? Yeah. And secondly, if they would have won in court, they would have had their costs paid. So whether their amount is irrelevant, it's the principle. Yeah, it's rubbish anyway. So they, they would have done it. So On the back of that, we got. Two other people around the country, one in Newcastle and one in Westminster, uh, got orders, and there's other people who are pushing for them. Uh, and some people claim that they will have been given orders uh, for the council to the councils to respond. And uh, we've had two responses now. In mine, they withdrew. In Newcastle, the council itself, its legal department, has put in a skeleton argument. And in Westminster, they've actually hired a barrister to uh, to present the case. Yeah, uh, they're totally exposing themselves now. It's, well, they getting, have done. They have you know, done from day one, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. The more we ask, the more, more you go for. Yeah. The more they provide to us, and yeah. the, and the more they actually make themselves look stupid. Yeah, and the. Really. The council in Mid Wales was um, is saying that the Bill of Rights was revoked. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Watch that video. Yeah. Because the council actually, they've got a senior legal person from the council who's actually put out an apology letter about that. Oh, it's funny how there's an apology all of a sudden, isn't there? Yeah. But the, basically, what we're doing is creating change. Of course. Yeah, and the truth will prevail. It certainly bloody will, mate. It certainly bloody will. So everybody, if you've got an alleged liability order, 
go through step 12. Make yeah. damn sure you push them to get a memorandum of entry. Yeah. Because there's, uh, we've got, we're helping people with attachment of earnings, uh, with uh, charges on the property. Yeah. But the same thing will apply with uh, bailiffs. If you do your paperwork right, then until there's a memorandum of entry, there's nothing they can do. Nah. Superb. All right, mate. Well, uh, I think we'll leave it there. Right. Because this is hour and 20 minutes, this one. Um, and that's covered quite a lot of information. And um, like we said, step 12 is, is where you be. So watch this space because we've got some more stuff coming up, like Mark said. So uh, yeah, Hopefully we've got some uh, very, very good news as well. Uh, but that depends on how long things take in the high court. Yes, it's it's boiling. It's worth well, simmering at the moment. <laughs> um, soon to be boiled on the boil. So uh, yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait for that one. We'll wait for that. One. Brilliant. Yeah. Cheers, bro. Nice one. Thanks again, Mark. Nice one. Okay. Take care, bye.